Migration is another animal behavior that a lot of ethologists have investigated. One of the more notable of these is the migration of the monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly is a beautiful orange and black butterfly that migrates annually from Mexico all the way north to Canada and back. This migration pattern is predictable and seasonal. Every year, the monarch butterflies migrate from Mexico and in the springtime fly north to go to Canada, spending summer there, only to return in the fall back down to Mexico. This migration involves 3,500 miles of flying by these small little insects. However, one of the things that have baffled scientists is that the monarch butterfly in fact only lives for about three to four months. This means that for the monarch butterflies to make this migration annually, it takes three to four generations of the monarch butterflies to complete this annual migration. That means each butterfly is migrating to a location they've never been before. They're migrating to a place where their parents have never been and even in some cases, their grandparents and great-grandparents. Again, ethologists wanna look at what the proximate cause and ultimate cause is of these behaviors. Taking a look at the proximate cause, we need to understand how the monarch butterfly is able to make this annual migration, even though it's headed in a direction where it's never been. Scientists used to believe that the way the monarch butterflies oriented themselves was by the Earth's magnetism. This is not that unusual as other organisms, all the way from bacteria to multicellular organisms, do have the ability to orient themselves to the North and South Poles, and based on this magnetic orientation are able to move in different directions. Other scientists tested this hypothesis by using strong magnets to see if the monarch butterflies would migrate in a different direction. They discovered that no matter how the strong magnets were oriented, the monarch butterflies still migrated in the direction that their typical migration patterns would take them. So it was not that they had an ability to detect the Earth's magnetism, there must be another reason why the monarch butterflies were able to migrate such long distances so reliably every year. They then tested the hypothesis that perhaps it was the sun's position in the sky that allowed themselves, the monarch butterflies, to orient themselves north and south. This would be similar to the honeybee, honeybee dance and communication that we're going to be learning about in a moment. Scientists then tested this hypothesis by building a very large enclosure where they were able to manipulate the direction of the light as the monarch butterflies moved within the enclosure. And they found indeed that the monarch butterflies did alter their direction in response to the changes in the orientation of the light indicating that much like their bee relatives, the monarch butterflies also use the sun's position in the sky to determine which direction was north and south. The monarch butterflies needed not just the sun's position, but also need to know what time of day it is. That way, the monarch butterflies can determine whether or not the sun is in the east or the west. Knowing what time of day it is, is using an internal clock known as a circadian clock. A circadian clock is an internal clock that's found in many organisms, again from unicellular organisms all the way up to multicellular organisms, including ourselves. And this circadian clock allows us to determine approximately what time of day it is at any given moment.
It also is what governs our sleep cycles, our eating habits, and what's affected when we have jet lag. We'll be talking about the circadian clock again a little bit later this semester. The monarch butterflies needed to have an internal clock to measure time, as well as a way of detecting the sun's position. It turns out that the circadian clock internal to their anatomy is entrained in their antennae. It's in the monarch butterfly's antenna that allows them to determine what time of day it is, and then using their eyes, they're able to see which position the sun is in the sky, and this allows them to orient themselves north or south. That's the proximate cause for the monarch butterfly migration, but what is the ultimate cause? The ultimate cause of the monarch butterfly migration, the reason why the monarch butterflies move from north to south every year, is to follow wildflower blooms and milkweed growing patterns. Butterflies, of course, obtain their nutrients and food from flowers, and monarch butterflies can obtain their nutrients from many different sources of wildflowers. However, the monarch butterfly larvae, the caterpillar, is not able to eat just any plant source. The monarch butterfly caterpillar feeds exclusively off of the milkweed plant. Because the monarch butterfly caterpillars can't eat any other type of plant, they must migrate in order to follow this annual plant's growing patterns. And that is what governs the ultimate cause of the monarch butterfly migration pattern. Now that we've talked about animal behavior in the context of migration, let's discuss animal behavior in the context of communication. Animal communication, specifically, this has been widely studied in the honeybee. The dance of the honeybee is a way that honeybees are able to communicate e to each other within an, a completely dark and enclosed hive. Honeybees are a highly social species. There are different types of bees. Forager bees go out in search of nectar. And when they find the nectar, they return to the hive and dance in order to communicate to the other forager bees where to find the food source. All honeybees are female, except for the drones, used exclusively to impregnate the queen. But all these forager bees that we're talking about are female bees. And they go out of the hive in search of food. Once they find food, they return to the hive and dance to communicate to the other forager bees where to find the nectar. This honeybee waggle dance involves moving in circles on the vertical honeycomb in utter darkness. As they're moving on the vertical honeycomb in darkness, they move their bodies back and forth very quickly. That's why it's called a waggle dance. Other forager bees queue up behind and follow the dance movements. They can feel how the forager bee is moving and in what direction, and in that can understand a lot about the food source this forager bee found. Dances include information such as the quality of the food source, the quantity of the food source, and the location of the food source as it relates to the location of the hive. A round dance indicates the food is very close to the hive. The waggle dance, where the bee wiggles back and forth, indicates the food is over 50 meters away. The longer the waggle dance, the farther the food location from the hive and the orientation of the waggle dance, depending on which angle the bee moves on the vertical hive, indicates the direction of the food source as it's oriented from the hive in relation to the sun. What's fascinating 
is that this waggle dance, when it's communicated to the bees, the bees can understand what time of day the forager bee found the food source and can adjust the orientation of the food source in relation to the hive and the direction of the sun. Because of course, the sun is going to move throughout the day. Again, we're gonna have a brief video about the waggle dance that I'm gonna post on the Canvas page. And you can see the link in the lower left-hand corner of this picture. In it, you'll find out even more information about the honeybee waggle dance.